Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Christmas is just around the corner. No, seriously, really, it is. And you may recall from your childhood, um, Christmas days spent playing uh, those games that have mechanisms that, let's say, um, we grew to hate. I'm talking things like Monopoly and Trivial Pursuit. Games that had roll and move mechanisms and... uh, trivia and all that sort of thing that I now try to avoid as often as possible. Well, Games Workshop clearly remembers those days because in the December issue of White Dwarf, they have presented a free new game. It is this game. It's the Spellflux Spire. And try saying that 10 times quickly without getting demonetized on YouTube. So, uh... This is terrible. It's a bad game. It's It's got roll and move. It's got miss a turn. It's got gotcha mechanisms. It's random. It doesn't seem to have a lot of points. It has uh, mechanisms that don't seem to achieve anything. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's not great. However, I, it's, it's hard to bag on something too much when... It was included as bonus content in the magazine. Um, I guess you, you've got to give them points for trying and, and, you know, points for coming up with something that is a, a mild diversion. And, and I guess points for giving me something to talk about on my channel. So what I thought I would do, I thought I would very quickly run through what this game is all about. Because... Uh, This issue of White Dwarf, White Dwarf December 2019, is currently up for pre-order. And after you've seen this game, maybe you will want to rush out and reserve yourself a copy. As you can see, Games Workshop have included a paper mat for you to play this game on. And on the reverse of this mat, there's actually a poster. I hate posters, and yet I would probably still use this for the poster rather than the game. It's a shame that they include things like this uh, when the magazine had rules for a new retinue character and they could have put the card for that retinue character on the cover of the magazine. That would have been a much better free gift. But again, I'm complaining about free gifts and I shouldn't because that's naughty of me. So anyway, it's a game for two to four players. And to play, you need the paper mat. You will also need two dice for each player and a suitable miniature or token. For this example, I will be using um, my Necromancer here. This was Glass Staff in a Dungeons & Dragons campaign that I'm playing. Um, And we will stick him over here. And then we have um, this typical grey beard wizard who was also um, a Necromancer in a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. And we're going to put him down here on the moon. So as you can see there is uh, the board comprising three rings around a central section. The aim of the game is to get into the center. Around the board you will also see four different symbols. There's a sun, a moon, a star and a lightning bolt. Each wizard will start on one of the symbols and that is their symbol for the rest of the game. Each wizard gets a power dice which starts at five and goes on the little square that matches the color of the symbol they're on. The star is red, so this dice belongs to the player who has the star symbols. Unfortunately, they didn't think to actually recreate the symbols inside the squares. That would have been useful as a reminder once your wizards start moving around the board. But never mind. There you go. He can have a five as well. These power dice are not rolled. They are used to indicate how much power the wizard has access to. Um, If you remember the old Warhammer quest, um, think that. Each player will also need a regular d6 for rolling. The youngest player will start. And like I say, the aim of the game is to get to the center. You get to the center by ascending through the runes. On your turn, you have a choice of four actions. Move, recover, gather power, or cast spell. And on the first turn of the game, you have to move. To move, you simply roll the dice. 
and you move that number of spaces clockwise around the ring that you're in. The excitement of Roll and Move, brought to you in 2019 by Games Workshop. If you roll a six, you move three spaces and get to make a free cast, a spell action. We will talk about casting a spell later on. If on your move, you end on a rune that was not a rune you started your turn on, you get to gain one power. Up to a maximum of six. If you finish a turn on your own rune, so here we are on the moon, then you can immediately ascend to your rune on the next circle. So I would go bing over here. So yeah, you've got roll and move and you've got rolling a specific number to land on a specific symbol to advance through the rings of the game. It's all very modern and current. If you have six power points on your turn, instead of making a regular move, you can make a presentation to your business partners or failing that, you can make a teleport action. To make the teleport action, you spend five power points. So you go from six uh, down to one, and then you immediately teleport to the next ring. This is the only way to get into the center of the board. And that is the only way to win the game. Accumulate six power points, teleport into the center. It should be noted that whilst moving around the board, if for any reason you land, on an opposing player, they move three spaces counterclockwise. Blonk, blonk, blonk. This achieves nothing. The second action that a wizard has available is to gather power. To gather power, you forego moving and instead you roll a d6. And you add that many points to your power dice. So in this case, I would go from one to four. If you are on your own Arun symbol, so if I was over here, oh, I've, I've switched them around now. See, I'm already confused. You go back over there. You come over here. If you are on your own Arun symbol, you get to roll two dice and you pick the highest dice to add to your total. It should be noted that if the dice you select, or if you were only rolling one dice, if the dice you rolled is a six, you only gain three points of power, but you get to make a free cast a spell action. It should also be noted that once you have six power, which is obviously what you're trying to do, you're trying to achieve your six power so that you can teleport through the rings. Once you have six power, you will become a target for your opponents because the third action that the wizards have available to them is casting a spell. There are three types of spell available, and regardless of which spell you choose, you must have at least two points of power. The first type of spell that you can cast is the fireball, and to use the fireball, you simply select any other player on the board. They don't have to be in the same ring as you, um, they just have to be on the board. And to cast your fireball, you roll a dice, you may have noticed a theme, and you reduce your power by the number rolled. In this case, I would reduce from a six down to a one. If you roll enough that it wipes you out and your dice goes to zero, you are exhausted and you, you will cast the spell as normal, but then you will have a little lie down. And then on your subsequent turn, all you can do is recover. Which we will talk about in a moment. Once you have cast the spell, the fireball, your opponent has a chance to unbind it. To do that, they roll a dice and they have to roll equal to or higher than the roll that you made. If they roll equal to or higher, then the spell is unbound and doesn't work. However, they then have to reduce their power dice by the amount rolled as well. And if that takes them down to zero, they're exhausted anyway. So a lot of the time, it really doesn't seem like a lot of point trying to negate a spell because a bad dice roll is going to knock you out anyway. If the fireball spell casts successfully, the target is moved one space anti-clockwise and then exhausted. A lot of the time, if someone shoots a fireball at you, 
you're choosing between being moved one space and then being exhausted or being exhausted. Decisions, decisions. The second spell available to the wizards is Drain Power. To do this, you select a target. Um, as before, you roll a dice and you reduce your power total by the amount rolled. Your opponent gets to try to unbind the spell if they so wish. If the spell is successful, the target loses 2d6 points of power, which is almost certainly going to exhaust them. Again, you're kind of choosing between being exhausted or probably being exhausted if you're the target of such a spell. The third spell is called Wings of Fire, and I am yet to establish its purpose. To cast Wings of Fire, as always, you roll the dice, negate, uh, um, reduce your power total by the amount rolled. You then roll 2d6, you choose one of the results, and then make a move action of that many spaces. And if you roll a 6, you move 3 and get to do a cast spell action. It's basically a move action. Yes, a move action, as if you could just do a move action on your turn normally anyway. However, there is a difference. If you use Wings of Fire, you don't gain any power points if you land on a rune, and you can't ascend to the next level after that move. So I don't know why you would do it. It's not like there's anywhere to go on the board, it's a circle. You just go round and round and round. I don't get it. I mean, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm missing something really, really obvious and someone in the comments can tell me why you would take the Wings of Fire action. But I don't get it because after moving, if you've depleted your power reserves, then you are exhausted. Which leads me to the fourth action that you can take on your turn. You can take the Recover action. The Recover action is a miss a go action. All you do is you stand your wizard up and you gain one point of power to put you back in the game. And then obviously on subsequent turns you can move or gather power. You won't be able to cast any spells because you don't have the minimum two points required. And that's it. So basically on your turn you will either, either recover because you were exhausted or you will move, gather power or cast a spell. You will fire spells at the other player in an attempt to temporarily exhaust them so that they miss a turn. They will try and make you miss a turn. You will randomly move around the board, hoping to land on your rune. If you land on your rune, you will ascend to the next level of the map. And finally, you need to teleport into the center space using six power points. And that's it. And I don't really get it. Um, I, <laughs> I get that this is a free game in the magazine. I get that it's a fun little thing that they've just included. Um, but they went to the effort to create a poster map for it. It takes up four pages in the magazine and it's dire. It really is. And I feel a bit bad for saying it because, you know, I think, I think the, the magazine White Dwarf should always be applauded for including new content for expanding other games or new rules for adding, um, new new facets to your hobby uh, that's really cool and it's nice that they sort of had the idea that you know it's christmas time let's chuck a board game in with the issue i i like the concept i like that idea it's very it's heartwarming to a certain degree because my childhood christmas was always about board games it was always about getting together with people playing board games and it still is to this day every year i have a christmas party i get all of my friends around we play board games and drink beer. It's splendid. But this, this is a, a throwback to all the worst things about board games. You know, rolling, rolling and moving, missing a turn, random, no decision, no real decision making. And a, a game that's just going to drag on until someone randomly wins. I don't get it. But maybe I'm being too harsh. Maybe I need some more festive cheer and Christmas spirit. Uh, let me know in the comments that I'm a grumpy old git because that's it from me for now. Thank you very much for watching this rather bizarre uh, video. 
If you have liked it, please consider pressing that like button. And if you have really liked it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.